In this video, I want to talk about all of the content that we're going to be seeing inside of Black Ops 6 Zombies, both on launch and also post-launch within the seasonal DLC content. This is a topic that I think is very, very important, especially after the long four-year wait between the end of Black Ops Cold War and Black Ops 6 Zombies. Thus far, we have two maps confirmed at launch, two RAM-based maps, which is a big emphasis to stress, that being Terminus with a set crew and more complex map, as well as Liberty Falls, a simpler, easier easier to understand map, which seems to just be an elite unit of operators. Whilst it's great that we're seeing two Zombies maps on launch, this surely can't be all of the content we are going to be seeing, especially after this long wait. There is probably going to be more on launch that has yet to be announced. So I want to go over what sort of evidence we have as to other content coming. And the reason why I'm saying this is because if we reflect on all of the past Call of Duty Zombies games, excluding Vanguard and also Modern Warfare 3 because these are outliers we're trekked in get full development cycles and also they weren't heading the main titles. Aside from Black Ops Cold War, which was another outlier, every other map since World at War has had a lot of content on launch, comparatively. Black Ops 1 saw two round-based maps on launch with Kino de Toten and 5, but then it also had Dead Ops Arcade. And they also brought back all of the World at War maps remastered with the hardened edition of the game, although they would eventually return in the Resurrection DLC back alongside Moon as DLC 4. Black Ops 2 who saw Transit as the main round based map, and Green Run was then split into sections, Farm, Town, and Bus Depot as smaller round based maps, and then we also had an additional bonus map, New Town, if you bought the season pass. With Black Ops 3, we had Shadows of Evil, we had the Giant Duries remake as a bonus if you bought the season pass, and then we also saw the Nightmares campaign at Zombies mode, as well as Dead Ops Arcade 2. With Black Ops 4, we of course saw four round based zombies maps on launch, although I don't want them to ever do this vast amount of content again because of course the game launched with a bunch of bugs and blue screen issues and maybe if they spread out that content more there might not have been so many issues as well as people could have enjoyed these maps more on their own instead of being overwhelmed with too much at once. I would much prefer with Black Ops 6 Zombies they spread the content out a bit so that there's no droughts or gaps between content post launch. Then with Black Ops Cold War, like I said, this is a bit of an outlier because we only had one round based Zombies map on launch which is exactly the same amount as we had when Zombies Zombies was first introduced as a spur in World at War with Nak Durantoen. And that of course was D Machine. However, we did have two extra pieces of content which were the Onslaught Zombies mode which really wasn't great at launch but it was updated post launch and it became a fan favourite. And we also saw Dead Ops Arcade 2. So with Black Ops 6 Zombies there has to be more than just these two RAM based maps on launch. Because like I said if we reflect on all of those past games there has always been something more. Now I don't think there's going to be any more RAM based maps but there has to be other modes, surely. Now, in terms of Dead Ops Arcade, I definitely don't think we're going to be seeing Dead Ops Arcade 4, because historically speaking, it seems like we get a Dead Ops Arcade every other Black Ops game. Now, Dead Ops Arcade 3 was seemingly being worked on inside of Black Ops 4, which is why it has so many assets for that. So I guess we could technically see Dead Ops Arcade back again this year, but I think it's much more likely to be for Call of Duty 2025, which is rumoured to be a Black Ops 2 sequel in 2030. That seems to be the game that's had less work and less time put into it, so if it is potentially short on content, it makes more sense that we're going to be seeing stuff like a Dead Ops Arcade next year and maybe a lot more remastered content than we're used to in order to suffice. But what other content could we be seeing? Firstly, I think Onslaught has a very good chance to return inside of Black Ops 6 Zombies. Now, as you will have noticed, and like I and many others have talked about in videos, throughout Modern Warfare 2 as well as Modern Warfare 3, a bunch of zombified multiplayer maps have been added to those games, but they have never actually came to the Zombies mode itself. It seems absolutely criminal that that isn't the case, especially with Modern Warfare 3 not having a round based mode, Onslaught could have been a good alternative for that. So it has me wondering if what if they are saving these zombified multiplayer maps that we've seen in the past couple Modern Warfares because they're going to release in Black Ops 6. Now yes, I understand that the time mirrors don't match up and aesthetics don't match up, but this could just be a way for them to save assets and resources and time because at the end of the day, Call of Duty is now using a unified engine with the Call of Duty HQ and content can transfer between the games at ease just like how Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer maps have transferred to Modern Warfare 3 or at least some of them. So a similar thing can be done with Black Ops 6. So I'm wondering if that's why we've not seen them in the past year because they're savoring it for Black Ops 6 instead. If so I think this would be great because Onslaught I think was a really great mode. Like I said it wasn't great on launch but after they did a lot of fixes to it post launch it got a lot better and I loved Onslaught Containment because it was so fast paced played on the smaller gunfight maps and this 
this is a good way for us to get a bunch of content, but obviously a big complaint about Cold War Zombies was it felt too multiplayer-esque, and people didn't vibe the atmospheres as much. So maybe that's why they want to do zombified versions of these multiplayer maps for Onslaught this time around, so they have a unique atmosphere similar to how they've tried to reskin and darken Uzbekistan a bit for the Modern Warfare Zombies iteration to differentiate it from Warzone. So that's one possibility. The other thing is regarding Onslaught coming back. I don't think Onslaught is going to be back inside of Black Ops 6 Zombies. Now, Treyarch had a job listing a very long time ago in which they stated that they were looking for someone to work on a new Warzone map, as well as some sort of sequel to Outbreak. This was before Modern Warfare Zombies seemingly went into development. Now, what I think was going on here is I think Treyarch were developing a sequel to Outbreak. However, at some point, they were tasked to work on Modern Warfare Zombies instead, and I think they scrapped whatever they were working on, and those assets got reworked into Modern Warfare Zombies. Most likely, the initial Outbreak they were working on was going to be played on their new Warzone map that they are working on as well, apparently called Avalon, which is also rumoured to not release, apparently, until COD 2025. So it makes sense to release it with that next year instead. Now, many different Outbreak assets have been found in the files of the game, such as there apparently being a hub, similar to Vanguard Zombies, where you can teleport between portals. Obviously, Vanguard Zombies was kind of similar to Outbreak, but on a much smaller scale, and it kind of removed any of the open world aspects. So I think Treyarch wants to do another open world Zombies in the future, but we've just had that with Modern Warfare Zombies. And I want to see this time around, they don't do an extraction shooter version, but instead do an endless survival version, just like the original Outbreak. Because Modern Warfare Zombies has improved on the Outbreak formula so much. However, it's limited in what they've been able to do, because it's an extraction shooter and it's on a 60 minute countdown. I would much rather prefer an endless survival open world Zombies experience. I think, as I said, they were probably working on it for Black Ops 6 Zombies, but I think it got cut for them to do Modern Warfare Zombies instead, but I think they might have reworked some of those systems into COD 2025 Zombies instead. I think that's when we're probably going to see Outbreak back instead, if I were to take a guess. It makes complete sense as well, because Avalon has apparently been pushed back for COD 2025. It was supposed to be this year. Instead, they're bringing Verdansk back, apparently, a couple months after launch or a few months after launch. And this year seems to be a big focus on round based because it's been such a long wait since proper round based experiences. That's what Treyarch are going to be mainly focusing on this year. Whereas next year, because like I said, it's probably had less time to develop, it would make sense to have round based and outbreak in that year, similar to Cold War Zombies, because they can update content for both simultaneously and it provides a wider range of content they can do. It's great for us round based fans to get satisfied this year and we can still have more round based content with Black Ops 2025 as well. At the same time, outbreak enjoyers might have something to enjoy as well. So, yeah, if I were to guess, I think we're probably going to be seeing something else on launch, which I think is going to be Onslaught, but I don't think we're going to see Outbreak. And maybe there's going to be some other surprises, another potential mode, or something like that. That's always a possibility as well. Now, in terms of post launch, like I said, this year is going to be focusing on round base. So, I think post launch, if they do do Onslaught, that'll of course get new multiplayer maps added. But I think a big focus is just going to be on round base. And Treg saw the criticisms of Cold War Zombies, the fact we only saw three round base maps in its DLC because they were updating Outbreak as well. So I think because of that, they're going to be trying to make up for it this year. So how many round base maps are we going to see in its post launch? Well, what I'm really hoping for and praying for, and this might be unrealistic, is one per season. If there's six seasons, that means six in total, which means we will get a total of eight round base zombies maps by the end of its post launch cycle. Now, this might be wishful thinking, but honestly, I think we do deserve that. And I think it is doable, especially because Trek have had four years to work on this game. I think, honestly, we should get that. This means there are no droughts between seasons, we're always having regular content, always something to look forward to, and there's only a couple months between every single Zombies map releasing. Like I said, maybe that is wishful thinking, but if we think back to Black Ops 4 Zombies, which had four round base maps on launch, if they held back two of those maps for post-launch, they would have had six in its post-launch. So what if they're doing something similar with Black Ops 6 Zombies? Instead of having too many round base maps at launch, they're instead spacing them out to ensure they get six and one per season. Now, if it's not six, then it's probably four, just like we are used to, which I really hope not. Like I said, I really think we deserve six, considering the long wait. I think this is kind of potentially a problem with Black Ops 6 Zombies. Our expectations are so high. If it wasn't for this long wait, I would never be expecting six round base maps in its post-launch, but because it has been such a long wait, that is why I'm thinking this. I mean, Terminus Island and Liberty Falls were literally teased four years ago inside of Cold War Zombies. Four years ago, they have been working on these maps, so surely they were probably finished a long time ago, more or less, so they've had time to work on more post-launch maps. Now, the biggest worry that I have, which is why we might not see six in its post-launch, is like I said, we're apparently going to be seeing COD 2025 zombies as well, and according to rumours, round base will be back in this game too, which means that we're going to be seeing round base in some capacity next year as well. Now, 
Now, it could be that we're going to be seeing a lot of remakes and remastered content that year instead, so that it's easier to develop, but at the same time, they still have to do work for it. So that's why it makes me think maybe they were planning some maps in Black Ops 6, but maybe they've been held back for COD 2025 because they now have to work on that. But according to Charlie Intel, no main developer has even been assigned for the project yet. Trek and Raven Software, I assume, are probably going to be working on it, but we don't know to what extent. Although there's been no outbreak confirmation or leaks or anything for COD 2025 yet, like I said, I still think it's probably going to be back. Trek have expressed when Outbreak was first released to basically view it as the Nag Darunt Hoten of open world zombies, their first take, and they clearly have plans for many far into the future. Now, in terms of what post launch maps we're going to be seeing in Black Ops 6 specifically, following on from the events of Terminus and Liberty Falls, which are taking place simultaneously, most likely the DLC are going to be focused on the Requiem Heads as well as Maya tracking down and locating Eddie Richthofen. We know that the story eventually ends up in 1996, with Terminus and Liberty Falls being in 1991, so spanning six years when the characters eventually sacrifice themselves. Dr. Grey records a message to Ava, letting her know of her true birth parents before they perish under a hotel bunker in Urzikstan. It's possible maybe they were on the run from Richthofen or something like that, and that is what the Black Ops 6 Zombies maps are going to be about. We'll be on the run, trying to uncover what's happening, and eventually they have to sacrifice themselves for some reason and leave Ravenov behind to look after Ava. Now there's a few ideas of what I have in mind for post-launch Zombies maps. The first is potentially in Washington DC, because we know this is going to be a big focus in the campaign of the game, there are going to be campaign missions here, and in fact, on the teaser marketing for Black Ops 6 Zombies, where it mentions Richthofen's Project Janus, there is a map of Washington DC. In fact, this is going to be the real-life location where Call of Duty Next is going to be held, where we're going to be seeing early gameplay of Black Ops 6 multiplayer and Zombies in just a month's time on August 28th. We also know the campaign is going to be based around a mysterious organization known as Pantheon who have infiltrated the CIA, even up to the highest level agencies. They remain in the shadows, not revealing themselves with some sort of plan to detonate a weapon of mass destruction in Washington DC. Now, interestingly enough, this is very similar to what Richthofen is up to with Project Janus. We know that he has high up officials in government and Project Janus specifically is funded by an uber rich group. It is possible that maybe Pantheon are one and the same of these shareholders. Maybe they are some, somewhat separate but could come in contact with one another. We also know that Russell Adler is being held alive in a underground CIA black site in downtown DC. And there's going to be a campaign mission where the team break him out disguised as police officers. The team escapes on motorcycles and are picked up by a helicopter leading to a chase throughout DC. Now, similar to Black Ops Cold War Zombies, they might be reusing some assets from multiplayer, so maybe they're going to be reusing some of the assets of a campaign level in Washington DC to actually be featured in Zombies. And also on the Project Janus blueprints in the Black Ops 6 marketing, there are blueprints for what we initially thought to be a gateway because we know Project Janus requires a large dark ether gateway, but upon inspection it actually looks like a vault of a bank. And we know that there is a campaign level set in a European casino. Now I don't think we're probably going to go to Europe, but I could see maybe some of the assets of the casino being reused as a zombies map considering the fact that there is literally a blueprint of this vault that can also be seen there, but we do know that there is going to be apparently a bank on Liberty Falls, so maybe that is what this vault is for and is nothing to do with the DLC map. But speaking of Washington DC, we've actually had hints in the past in Cold War Zombies of us going to a Washington DC DLC map. Because before the events of Mawada Toten, when Valentina created her gateway there to free her quote-unquote father, which actually turned out to be the Forsaken, manipulating her, we learned that Omega were actually planning to send Dark Aether Inversion warheads to hit Washington DC, Manhattan, and New York. Now, at the time I made videos saying, whoa, are we getting loads of DLC maps for Cold War Zombies? We're going to be seeing one in Washington, Manhattan, and New York. This is absolutely insane. Now, obviously, as it turns out, in the first Outbreak main quest, Samantha Maxis and Ravenov had the Inversion missiles diverted into the Pacific Ocean, probably setting up the stage for Terminus Island. But this was a clue back then that we may potentially be getting zombies maps set here. Maybe they were even plans, but Trek realized they just don't have the time and resources to do this for Cold War Zombies. After all, they were then moved on to working on Vanguard Zombies and all of these other projects. Maybe they were planned because they were seemingly hinting at it, but it ended up just being a red herring and we never ended up going there. So yeah, Omega planned to literally target these locations and nothing came of them. In fact, Gorev said that it wouldn't be advisable to target the United States directly. And so we never ended up seeing zombies maps there. Now, the other zombies map that has been hinted, and 
this has been hinted for a while, and honestly, I thought this could be the DLC 4 map in place of Forsaken for Black Ops Cold War Zombies is actually an Atlantis map. Now, I know this has been a meme in the community for a very long time. It's been something that Zombies fans have been theorizing about forever. In fact, on the map classified in Black Ops 4, they even hinted at an Atlantis map, but then we never ended up seeing it. I guess this was just paying homage to that, and Shadows of Evil is basically the thematic version of Atlantis, I guess, but could we ever actually see a proper Atlantis map? Because in Cold War Zombies, we learned that Nazi Germany were seemingly looking into locations and items of interest pertaining to the Dark Aether. Strauss actually had a message saying that the SS unit scoured the globe for the likes of Thor's hammer, the Holy Grail, and Atlantis itself. Fantastical, yes, but what if the scholars they forced to help them actually found something usable? At the end, he said, Scheiser, I knew I shouldn't have mentioned Atlantis. And then we actually saw another mention of Atlantis inside of Vanguard Zombies, where we had a radio from Kraft talking about Die Wahrheit and that they had different locations on the wall, again, of the Holy Grail, Thor's Hammer, Atlantis, and Shangri-La. Now, we know Shangri-La is a real place. We literally saw a zombies map there. But could we see an Atlantis underwater zombies map? Especially because we saw the inversion missiles diverted into the Pacific. Now, I know that's not where that people think Atlantis is located, although there's many different speculation of where people think Atlantis is, if it were to ever be a real place. But nevertheless, could we ever see an underwater zombies map? It has been seemingly hinted at for a while. I'm not exactly sure. I would love to see it, though. I hope that with Black Ops 6 Zombies, we go to weirder and wacky locations like we used to in the zombie story, especially in the Ether story, because Cold War Zombies had pretty boring locations, unfortunately, and I hope with the extra time and resources, we can go to more intriguing locations. So far with Terminus, it seems a bit interesting, and I like the atmosphere, but it's not entirely a unique location. It's similar to, I guess, Zetsubo, Noshima, and Mob of the Dead. I want to go to new, more fantastical, crazy places like we were even doing in the Chaos story with Ancient Evil, which Kevin Drew worked on, who is, of course, working on Black Ops 6 Zombies as well, and Liberty Falls is just set in a town, so that isn't a crazy location at all. So I'm hoping in this post-launch, we can have some wild maps once again, especially because Chaos was planned to have more maps, and people even think that maybe we could have gone to the Library of Alexandria, or maybe Atlantis itself in the future if that storyline wasn't ever cancelled, and we know that the Chaos story has been reintroduced into the Dark Aether story, we know Alistair Rose exists now in the Dark Aether timeline, so maybe some of those old cancelled Chaos Story beats could be reintroduced. And be sure to let me know your theories on whatever Zombies maps you think are going to be coming to the game, as well as let me know if you have any indications or teasers that you have picked up on in Cold War Zombies, Vanguard Zombies, and Modern Warfare 3 that might be giving hints to where we might be going in the future. Also, let me know what other modes you want to see on launch, such as Onslaught, Outbreak, or anything more, as well as let me know what maps you actually think are going to come in a realistic manner, aside from what you actually want. But that's all I want to say. Let me know all of your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video, and make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news information. So anyways, thank you for watching, and uh, bye.